Wonder with Bob Bierman. no doubt in anybody's mind, especially mine, that this world is full of evil. Now, evil has always been with us. It's always been an issue. And as evil as the world has shown itself to be over time, there is a time that it's going to get worse. And I believe that time is just about upon us. That's just my personal opinion. That's not any kind of a prophecy, but to look at the things that I'm seeing today on a global scale, it begins to make somebody wonder. Now, St. Paul wrote to his young new evangelist by the name of Timothy. And in the second letter he wrote to Timothy that we have, he writes in chapter 3. So this is from 2 Timothy chapter 3. And many of you know the words quite well. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Not may come, not might come, they shall come. Verse 2. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous boasters, proud blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. We've always had those elements with us in our in our societies, and this goes back to ancient times. We've always had this self-love. There's always been coveting. There's always been boasting. But today, those that would blaspheme God have no filter. They don't care who they're talking to, whether it be social media or in a Walmart. Their language is foul. Their anger is on display. And they don't mind taking the Lord's name in vain in a public setting loudly. Disobedient parents, all kids tend to do that. But today, here's something you need to understand. Kids are disobedient because the parents allow them to be disobedient. Discipline is gone. Many parents, and I've seen this firsthand, To keep the kids out of their hair, they give them these electronic toys, phones, Xboxes, whatever, Playstations, and say, stay in your room and just leave us alone. And they have no clue of what these children are doing online. And they frankly don't care. I've seen it one too many times. I'm sick and tired and disgusted by parents that defend these violent, vicious, mind-altering electronic games. They make excuses. Oh, it relieves stress, baloney. It creates an apathy. Go back to Colum- Go back to Columbine over 20 some odd years ago. These students had one thing in common that bought those guns and killed people in a school. They were deep into, at that time, and still by today's standard, pretty high-tech video games. They just weren't getting enough thrill anymore. So I'm sick and disgusted with parents that buy these machines and give them to their impressionable teenagers. I've seen the damage. I've seen damaged adults that don't even get it. People in their 20s and 30s still playing video games by the hour. We have a problem on our hands. And part of it, I believe, is what's making everything speed up is social media and electronic games. And our entertainment from cable and satellite and what have you. Video rentals. There's no filter anymore. There's no standards anymore. Anything goes. And many Christians just abide by it, and they they just accept it as this is how the world is today. Not much we can do about it. 
There's a lot we can do about it. And even though I understand fully we are fighting a losing battle. Well, Bob, why fight? Because God commands us to. If we are Christians, we are salt and light in this world. And even though there are fewer and fewer Bible-believing Christians left in the United States, which is what I call one of the last bulwarks, one of the last firewalls, I'd rather go down fighting than be complacent and accepting of what this world has to offer. Here we are in the month of June, second day. I didn't have a chance to mention it yesterday. But by the way, I want to thank Jim Calhoun for for doing most of yesterday's program. But this now, the month of June has been used to be month of June used to be when people got, you know, that was the bride's month, remember? June weddings. Now it's Pride Month. And we're all supposed to suddenly be embracing LGBTQ plus and whatever not nonsense. The Marines have done it. The United States Marines, I can remember their their advertising slogan 40 years ago, we're looking for a few good men. Now it's like they're looking for a few gay men. It's disgusting. Our military's gone woke and worthless, by the way. When's the last time the United States ever won a war? Was it in Afghanistan? Um, I don't think so. Maybe Iraq? Well, we kind of left that on its own as well. Oh, how about Vietnam? No, we left there. Well, what about Korea? It's still... We still have soldiers at the demilitarized zone with North Korea. Okay, so what war was it? Hmm, looks like it's been about 77 years since since World War II, since we've had a decisive, shall we say, victory in war with the United States military. Do you understand? Sir, yes, sir! What is so sad to me is how the military of the United States of America has become a an experiment. An experiment in social culture that has nothing to do with the primary mission of a military. I would assume, based upon the Constitution of the United States, that our military's primary objective is to defend our nation. I think that's a simple and easy enough task, to defend our nation. Unfortunately, and I'm increasingly disturbed by this. Our military has been used to actually cause some unrest around the globe. The founding fathers of this country, of the United States, urged us to be real cautious in international entanglements. When Dwight Eisenhower, before he left the White House, he made a speech to the citizens of the United States And he gave this warning, and I think too many people have never understood it or heeded it, beware the military-industrial complex. He said it, beware the military-industrial complex. And you have to go back to the Second World War to fully understand what that means and how it came into being. When we entered World War I, our military was rather small by comparison to what it is today, and I'm not talking just about technology. We were not we were not anticipating foreign countries invading the United States. We just were not. And so when we had to call up soldiers to serve for a short amount of time toward the end of World War I, we had to, shall we say, build up a military. Then, of course, we had the Depression, and the military didn't grow that much. But when we entered World War II, we started spending incredible amounts on our military to serve both in Europe and in the Pacific. 
many corporations became very wealthy during that time of World War II. And just because the war was over, these newly found defense contractors, well, (laughs) what did they want? They wanted to keep it alive and well. Face it, for several years, they've been making tremendous amounts of money supplying armament and materials to the United States military. And and so when we come back to a peacetime economy, they didn't want to give it up. And, And I'm certain that a lot of money was spent on a lot of politicians to keep growing our military, amplifying the threats around the globe to which we would endlessly be entangled. And how many people have lost their lives for wars that never came to a conclusion? It's some scary stuff. It really is. So the Marine Corps celebrating Pride Month. You know the rest of them will do the same. How many retail outlets, you know, retail outlets, how many of them are going to be big into the LGBTQ I mean, we know Target will be. We know that AT&T will change the color of their AT&T logo. Everybody will jump into Pride Month. They're motivated by money, and they have no morals. And we're all supposed to just drop everything and celebrate with them what the Bible condemns. It is a sign of the times in which we are living. As I said, perilous times are now upon us. Now let's get back to what St. Paul wrote to Timothy. And I'm sure many of you know these words. But I want to remind you of them and and kind of take you through this line by line. So we know that we have children disobedient to parents. We have people that are unthankful, unholy. They don't care. You've seen it. I've seen it. Now they desecrate churches because they're, the church may stand against abortion, so you have to desecrate a church. These blasphemers, they're proud, they're boasters. They love their own selves. Verse 3, without natural affection, let's stop right there. This goes back to LGBTQ. This is not natural, the kind of affections that, that are occurring truce breakers, false accusers. Hey, we see that with the fact checkers, too. They'll say something you say that is true isn't. It is a by design psychop to make you doubt the truth. Incontinent, they're fierce, and they are despisers of those that are good. Let me say that one again. They despise those that are good. They're traitors. Well, we've seen that here in the United States as far as I'm concerned. It's sad the trial ended with a jury failing to convict a sleazy attorney that was trying to get the FBI to buy into a hoax. He's a traitor. Sussman is a traitor. Everybody involved with the Russian collusion delusion is a traitor to the the United States of America and should be treated as such. Those that perpetuated a hoax and knew it was a hoax. This is not just a little political game. This is sedition. This is treason and should be dealt with accordingly. They're heady. Kind of reminds me of of Adam Schiff. He's kind of heady. I mean, he doesn't care. He lies on a he lies without any guilt at all. He spent all though he should be tried for treason as well because he sat on television claiming that he had seen the evidence of Russian collusion that never existed. And even after it came clear that there was none, how many are still trying to keep it alive or or they they still are because there's some there's some people foolish enough to believe the lie. They're high minded, they're lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. We see that in our culture today. And even worse, now we're getting to verse five. 
having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. You know, I I look at some of these woke churches around the world, across the United States, Canada, Europe, United Kingdom, where they have abandoned willfully the true gospel of Jesus Christ and have substituted a false and damnable gospel. We're a church of inclusion. We celebrate your homosexuality. Come worship with us. There was a person that I know, and I thought I knew him. I really did. He had been a church planter for a very, shall I say, biblically sound, for the most part, Christian denomination. Worked for them for years. And he was wanting to become a part of the denomination in which I serve, and and he was accepted. This had nothing, I had nothing to do with that at the time. He was accepted in. And I had some time to spend with him a number of years ago, and, and everything seemed okay, but something seemed wrong, and I just couldn't put my finger on it. He has walked away from the church body that I serve a number of years ago. He walked away. And he was going through a divorce, and I didn't and I'm getting two different stories that were in conflict. And then we lost track of each other. He kind of disappeared. Well, I guess it was yesterday that I was just looking online and, and you know, after a long time, every once in a while, you're reminded of somebody and, and I, I looked up to see what this individual was up to. I lost contact for oh about three, three and a half years. And and he has moved into a church denomination that brags about their inclusiveness. Inclusiveness. And he thinks that, you know, if men want to marry men, then he'll be more than happy to do it. A lot of people will say, well, he must have never been saved to be able to do something like that. Because, you know, the Bible, you know, we we all believe that once saved, always saved. And, And that is not necessarily true according to Scripture. The Bible does talk about those that have fallen away from the faith, a great falling away. So to assume that, well, when he was nine years old, he went down and and got himself right with the Lord and shook the preacher's hand and got baptized. Hadn't been to church in 45 years, but he's good. He's going to heaven. Though his life has no evidence of the gospel living in him. And so the claim will be made, He was. I guess he wasn't saved. Well, maybe he was. And like the Bible says, he forfeited that gift of God. See, you're correct in saying, you know, you are sealed of the day of redemption. God's not going to take away that seal. God's not going to decide to withdraw your salvation. But look carefully at the scripture. There are those that have walked away from their salvation and curse God in the process. There's a slew right now of people in the contemporary Christian music realm that once they get fame and fortune, they make a decision that God is no longer important that Christianity is a myth, and they start chasing after the worldly pleasures, the worldly music, and the worldly money and fame that goes with it. Reading a group, I think, that's called DC Talk. They've been around a long time. One of their founding members has just walked away and said, nope, there's no God. Seeing a lot of that, within a lot of these contemporary churches where the gospel has been so poorly preached and and taught, many of these new churches, 
Many of these new churches have bought into a social gospel. And you have even some Southern Baptists beginning to say, we need to be maybe more inclusive of LGBTQ. Maybe we're wrong. We need to rethink it. The one word, the one phrase I can't stand, I hear it in, I heard it in government enough times to get me sick to my stomach. Reimagine. Reimagine this. Reimagine everything. That term reimagine means tear it apart, start with something new, and reject the old, even if it was good. And we live in an age now of apostate churches. Let me continue with what he had to say. Verse 5, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away, church body after church body after church body has gone woke. They've bought into the world. They want the worldly pleasures. They want the money. They want the acceptance. The Episcopal Church, I've mentioned it many a time, for the most part, at their highest leadership, has rejected the gospel and spit in Christ's face. Methodist Church are going through a divorce, let's have of of sorts right now. Those that are Bible believers and those that are Bible haters. I'll say it again. Those that are Bible believers and those that are Bible haters. They love the world. They love the rainbow flags. They love the gay weddings. And they're all upset Because the Word of God says they can't do these evil things they want to do. So what do they want to do? They want to just take over the whole church body, and you must comply. And many are going to leave. I pray that many do. Now, verse 6. From this sort are they which creep into houses and leave captive silly women laden with sins and led away with divers' lust. No morality. No filter, no restraint, just just following their lust. And it says, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, I've mentioned another Bible verse before in 2 Thessalonians. There are those that want to believe the lie so bad they reject the truth. And they... They want the lie to be the truth, and for them, they they are given their wish. And God sends them mass delusion. Mass delusion. Let me say that again. Mass delusion. Where they will believe the lie and always reject the truth. And they've done that to their own condemnation. One of the biggest problems I see in what I call Americanized Christianity is that Christians in the United States, Canada, Australia, have never faced any kind of real persecution for being a believer in Christ, especially here in the United States. But today that's beginning to change. The pandemic gave us some wonderful direct evidence of how that can happen on how your freedom of religion can be stripped away regardless of what the Constitution says. St. Paul reminds Timothy that all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. The level of persecution is rising and it's rising rapidly if you had not noticed I'm seeing it and we're seeing this division within the church even formally Bible believing church bodies are are being ripped apart by chasing after the desires of a satanic cult where they think they're saved but they can do as they please They have created for themselves another gospel, which is not the gospel. And true believers increasingly are mocked on television, 
Many of the news channels like CNN and MSNBC, those right-wing Christians, you know, they're dangerous. And as and as true believers become smaller in number, and evil takes a greater hold in this world in which we live, we draw ourselves closer to that day of Jesus' return. I'm going to take a break right now. And when I get back, I want to address a few things that some people have written and some people have made comment about these end times. And there have been a lot of false prophets and a lot of false teachers. You know it and I know it. They've been out there forever. So rather than, you know, focus on all the evil in the world, let's start focusing on how we deal with it. And we'll do that after the break. If you believe in the work of Truth to Ponder, would you consider giving us your financial support to stay on shortwave radio? The month of May was was not too bad, but I know the lean summer months are coming. And I'm just going to mention a couple of things, and I just what you need to know it. This is just I'm not saying anything in particular, but I want you to understand something. There are many of you that support this program. And you let me know what radio station you listen. And I've been looking over the past three months at what stations are able to cover their expense and which ones are not. And the time is going to come that I've got to figure if a station is not producing and the people are not listening and if this message is not being received, it would be better to take those funds and get airtime on facilities that would be better for the program. So it's important I know where you listen. If you believe in our ministry and can support us financially, make a check payable to Ancient Word Radio. That's Ancient Word Radio, mailing address, Truth to Ponder, 5753 Highway 85 North. That's 5753 Highway 85 North, number 3248, number 3248. And we are in Crestview, one word, Crestview, Florida, 32536. That's Crestview, Florida, 32536. Also, visit our website, truth2ponder.com, truth2ponder.com. That mailing address and other ways to support the ministry can also be found there. This is Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman. The mystery of the Matan in a moment. Shalom Aleichem. This is the nice Jewish boy, Jonathan Kahn, your Jewish connection. And get your pen out as fast as you can so you don't miss out on receiving a special free gift you're going to get and love in a moment. Now, today we continue in the Pentecost Mysteries. Now, when a Hebrew man and woman were betrothed to each other to be married, they would separate, often for about a year, before consummating their union at the wedding. But sometime after the betrothal and before the wedding, the groom would send to his bride a gift or a collection of gifts. The gift would be a sealing on their engagement, a symbol of his pledge to her, a token of their marriage to come, an adornment to beautify the bride, and a reminder to encourage her during their time of separation, a sign of his love for her. Now, the gift or the collection of gifts was called the matan in Hebrew. Now, Messiah pledged himself to us. And if you've received him, you are now betrothed. Now, there was one day in the Hebrew year that was called the day of the Matan, the day of the gift. And it was on this very day that the Lord, the bridegroom, sent to us his Matan, the day known as the day of Matan. To this day in the Hebrew calendar is the Feast of Shavuot, or in Greek, the day of Pentecost. What is Pentecost? It's the day when the bridegroom gives his gift of love to the bride. What is the gift or the matan? It's the Holy Spirit. It's the groom's gift of love to you, his bride, to you, to seal your betrothal, to remind you of his pledge to you, to give you a taste of the marriage to come, to adorn you and make you more beautiful, to encourage you until the time of the wedding. So rejoice. You are his beloved bride. Receive his precious gift better than jewels. Be encouraged, my friend. Be strong. Live in the spirit and be glad your wedding day approaches. Want more? Ask for the Matan 
Now, the free gift for you, the most incredible evidence and proof of Jesus as the Messiah discovered in the writings of the rabbis. You'll get it in the mystery of the temple doors, plus sapphires guaranteed to give you the power of victorious life in God, all free. How do you get all these free gifts? Easy. Just remember Jesus' Hebrew name, Yeshua, and dial it. That's it. Just dial 1-800-YESHUA-1. Call now, 1-800-YESHUA-1. My friend, you're on this earth for a great purpose, to be a blessing. So I invite you to join with me in bringing the greatest blessing to the unreached peoples of the world salvation to five continents with over a billion people just call now 1-800-YESHUA-1 that's Y-E-S-H-U-A-1 or write me direct the nice Jewish boy box 1111 Lodi, New Jersey 07644 that's box 1111 Lodi, L-O-D-I, New Jersey 07644 till next time this is Jonathan Khan saying Shalom Aleichem peace be to you my friend in Messiah Adon Olam Lord of all Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman. And welcome back to part two of the program, Truth to Ponder. And I'm your host, Bob Bierman. Now, before, before I get back to the topic we've been discussing, a little bit of housekeeping, a little bit of updates on things going on behind the scenes. My wife and I would appreciate your prayers more than you'll ever be able to understand. Right now, We are in the process of trying to sell our home in the mountains of North Georgia. And we we really feel very led to to be closer to family as a practical matter and also be in an area where I can spend more time in this ministry and the other work that God has called me to do. And so it is a stressful time. I mean, moving... They, they give a scale of all the horrible things that happen in life. You know, the death of a loved one, a spouse is way up there. And believe it or not, in terms of stress, moving moving can be right behind it. And at our age, it's not as easy as it may have been maybe 20 or 30 years ago. Look, in the 1970s, as a young disc jockey all the way into the early 80s, moving was something that happened frequently because that's just the nature of of the business, but I was younger then. So it is a a different time and a different place. So keep us in your prayers. The the house is listed effective this Friday, that's tomorrow, and through the weekend. We're going to be leaving and heading up to spend time in Virginia to make it so much easier for the real estate agent to be able to show the home. When I'm producing a radio program and the whole mornings are gone, in getting things done, it's hard to show a house when I'm trying to record a program. And so it just made more sense to get away from the possibility of messing that up. And also, we have two small dogs, so they won't be barking at any potential person coming by to visit, and it'd just be a lot easier. So keep us in your prayers that this this house can sell quickly. I just feel that time is is not our, our our best friend right now, but keep us in prayer. Now, getting back to the topic at hand, end times. We hear a lot about end times, and I've had people that have written me in recent weeks and, and even in the last day or so to talk more about some of the end time theology. Well, I don't have all the answers, and honestly, I don't think anybody does. We see, as St. Paul says, through a glass dimly. But when we, when we arrive on that shore, we'll fully understand. It'll all make sense. Right now, it doesn't. There are things that we need to know, and there are things that we need to understand. The first thing is that we are, as Christians, always to be expecting perilous and difficult times. One of the major issues I have with, with Americanized Christianity is we never face persecution. We never face difficulties or hard times, or until recently anyway. American Christianity has had it easy. It really has. We take freedom for granted, 
And and so many people that claim to be followers of Christ, they, they can find plenty of other things to do. I'm talking pre-pandemic now, okay? Before the pandemic, before people were afraid to go to church, before some of the woke churches required you wear a face covering and rubber gloves and all this other nonsense, a lot of people could easily take church for granted. There's also another Americanized theory that I think is a heresy. It is misunderstood and misapplied. The Bible does say that those who are saved are sealed unto the day of redemption. I believe that. In other words, God is not going to take your salvation away from you if you are saved. He's not going to willy-nilly decide that you did something wrong today, and so your salvation is gone. However, there is a lot of Scripture that backs up the concept that you can forfeit, you can give away, you can throw away your salvation. And I don't buy the argument, well, that person must have not been saved right to begin with. I don't buy it. I absolutely do not buy it. There are people, and the Bible says it clearly, that have fallen away from the faith. They've they've just rejected it. They were believers, and by their own choice and their own action and their own mouth, have walked away from from the faith once delivered to the saints. And so we need to recognize that the Bible does speak about a great falling away as we come into these times of turbulence and tribulations, and yes, even end times. Now, we talk a lot about the news and how it corresponds to end times on this program. But I'm never going to set a date I'm not going to say he's coming next Tuesday or on the 1st of January, 2023. I I mentioned to the audience earlier this week, if you were listening, that there's a website out there that has it all laid out, you know, that everything was that started this past Friday on the 27th. Believe it or not, the 10 days of tribulation and the first rapture and then the second rapture. And then Jesus comes on January 1st, 2023. There's a website that says that out there. Obviously, the website is going to be wrong. You don't publish the day or the hour. The Bible says you don't know. We're given the signs of his coming. The problem that we're going to have to deal with is that we go through periods of extreme tribulation and persecution. St. Paul went through extreme extreme persecution. Early Christians were rounded up and they were killed for their faith. Being a Christian for the first 400 some odd years of, of being in the faith was not an easy thing to do. And in some parts of the world, it still is not an easy thing to do. As Christians, we should understand that we are victorious. That we have victory over death and the grave, and we shouldn't be afraid of all these things going on in our world today. And I think we've done very little to exercise and build our faith. Too many Christians are marginal at best. They understand a little bit of the faith, but they don't fully understand the faith. They have no need to. They have it all figured out in their own mind. Then you have other Christians, and like I say, we do talk about end-time theology. We do talk about the hard times that this world has faced and will continue to face. But I also meet too many people that claim to be followers of Christ that live in misery and hopelessness and despair that, you know, it's going to be bad. Times are going to get rough. It's hard times are coming. And every time I hear Christians be moaning and whining and murmuring and complaining like that, I'm reminded of this old song from the old TV show, Hee Haw. Deep dark depression 
Addiction, excessive misery. If it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. And do you want to know what's really scary? These are the same people that know every line, every verse to the hymn, Victory in Jesus. They have it totally memorized. Yet they're the same ones that often live in the gloom and doom. This ministry, we talk about the bad things to come. Not to make you afraid, but to be prepared. Not to have you living in fear, but to live in hope. And I don't know how to explain that to you any stronger that this program is about hope in Jesus Christ, not to be fearful of the things of the world and all the chances and all the changes of this life. First part of the program, we talked about those verses out of 2 Timothy about the perilous times that are to come. Jesus himself warns us, all throughout Scripture, St. Paul admonishes us that we, we always live in a time of potential persecution and hardship. It should not be a surprise to the Christian that we will and can face hardship. What the Bible warns, and this is where Christians in the United States need to really start paying attention. Christians in the United States have had it easy since the founding of this nation. They were guaranteed freedom of religious expression, though in recent years, we've seen that infringed upon more and more with each passing decade. We've also seen the church give up things that belong to the church and have been given over willfully to to secular government like the raising of our children. Now we have people in government that believe that the children belong to the state, not to the parents. And how did that happen? We let it happen. Unfortunately, many so-called Christians allowed the state to intervene and get in the middle of raising of children. Then we have churches, on the other hand, that have walked away from the gospel and they preach nonsense, silliness, wokeness, and basically damnable heresies. I can remember way back in the early 1970s. Now, where I lived in upstate New York, I was not that familiar with the Southern Baptist Convention and a Southern Baptist Church. Matter of fact, I didn't know much about independent Baptist churches or general, you know, GRB, uh, general regular Baptist churches or anything else. I I just didn't. wasn't in my background. But when I came south in the early 1970s, I became exposed to Southern Baptist, and I attended from time to time many a Southern Baptist church. And it was obvious that they were Bible-believing and they had standards. And for many, many years, especially the 1980s, and even into the early 1990s, they were probably the fastest-growing denomination in the United States. But somewhere along the way, somebody had a better idea. Hey, we need to get more people, and and we need to get more people in our churches, so we have to do things that will attract young people. Because young people are, are 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 not liking what we do. And so the church made a few wise decisions, but over time made some pretty bad decisions. When it comes to worship, When it comes to our gathering together, our purpose is to worship God and not to exalt ourselves. Let me say that again, and I want this to sink in. 
when we gather together to worship, it's about our giving to our Lord. It's our workship. It's not about me. It's not about I. Not about me, 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 and I. And what started happening was the focus gradually turned away from Christ as the center of our worship and entertainment and things about me as the center of our desire and worship. Didn't happen in one day. It happened over a period of time. Little compromises here and there. And before you know it, we had built this entire cottage industry of contemporary Christian music, and it makes mega millions of dollars each and every year. And one of the latest trends that I've seen within a lot of the contemporary Christian music culture, now not all of it's bad, I'm not saying that, but there are a number of these artists I read the other day, um, DC Talk, they're a group that's been around for a long time. One of their founding members has come out and rejected Christianity, walked away, I'm done. I don't believe anymore. I did, but I don't now. The allures of this world, the money of this world, the fame of this world became too much for him to walk away from. And and I've said this before, this idea of the once saved, always saved is true. God's not going to take your salvation away. But as I've said many a time, you can forfeit it. You can throw it away. And many Christian artists have thrown their faith away to make more money in the world. And now the Southern Baptist Church, many of the old-style churches are, are shrinking and dying off. And many of these new contemporary churches are growing. And one of the most dangerous things I've seen is when the preacher or pastor or senior pastor becomes almost a godlike figure in that church with a spotlight on. And here's one of the things that is that I've noticed and I've attended several over the years. And each time I go back to one by invitation or for some special event, the farther down the path they've gone. Now, I'm not going to say the name of the church or the place, but I, I remember one in South Carolina. It started in a dormitory room with a dormitory chaplain that had an idea to have a a church or a congregation that would be relevant to college students. And so in this dormitory, and from the dorm room to like the day room, they started a little church. And it had contemporary music. You could wear your blue jeans and just be yourself. And eventually that that little startup on that college campus needed the fine arts center building as a place to hold worship because it grew from a handful to a few dozen to well over a hundred. And in time, they were several hundred strong in that church. Then began the building committee and search. And they found a wonderful piece of prime real estate on a highway in that community. And they raised the money to buy it, and they were able to borrow the money from a local bank to build this monstrous church building. And when it was all said and done, it was this, looked more like a warehouse than a church when you went in. It was dark, and it had all the fancy lighting, all the multimedia, all the television cameras, all the sound equipment, a professional praise band, 
professional paid worship leaders. And the church grew by leaps and bounds. And everybody hung on every word that was ever spoken by their senior pastor. And their ministry grew so incredibly, they they started building campuses all over that region and eventually all across the state where the service the message from that service could be beamed to all the other congregations that were meeting with the same name, but in different communities. Most had their own praise band, but when it came time for the message all carefully timed, they went to their featured speaker on the big screen. That church ran into some problems when the senior pastor, it was discovered, had serious moral issues. And this is long before the pandemic, my friend. It cost them dearly in the number of people that were attending. They had put their faith in a man and not in God. And they lost their pastor. And thus the church began to lose. And funds became tighter and tighter. And guess what? This same story has repeated over and over and over again all over the United States. When man is the focus, when the preacher is the focus, and not God's word, not our, what we give to our Lord, it's all askew. And Satan will work overtime to tempt and persuade that pastor to fall into sin. There's so many of these mega churches, and they have one thing in common, not all, I'm just saying, it's an abnormally high number of pastors that fall into various moral sin, affairs with members of the church, alcohol and drug abuse, all of it comes their way because they've made themselves a target because they put themselves up on this high pedestal with the spotlight. Instead of being a servant of the word, they become, in essence, a little God in their church. And it's always doomed to failure. One of the easiest things to happen in a church, and I've seen it in my lifetime, even as a young child, I was raised in a church that had a very dynamic pastor, and he could preach marvelous sermons that even caught the attention of my young ears. He was excellent at talking to people one-on-one, establishing other churches around ours, and even building Christian schools. And so it was difficult for that particular congregation when when he finally retired and moved from New York to Florida. A lot of people left that church after he retired. Those people were at that church for all the wrong reasons. It's a wonderful blessing to have a talented pastor in your church that knows how to preach and does an effective job of preaching and teaching and sharing the gospel. Good pastors are hard to find. But our faith is in Jesus Christ, not in our pastor. Our faith is in Jesus Christ, not in the music that entertains us. Because, see, none of that stuff's going to sustain us when these difficult times will come. Like I say, I can't tell you if we're getting ready to enter the Great Tribulation. I do not know. I do not have that insight. I'm not producing a website that tells you what time and day Jesus is coming again. This program has never done that, and it never will do that. I won't even allow people on this program that would attempt to do that. Some have. 
I know of several programs that bring these people on that give dates and predictions that never come true. And so you need to need to shun them. Look, the day's going to come when this program, which is heard as a podcast, will be increasingly more difficult to find. I'm 100% certain of that. That certain media outlets will decide that this program and its content are too controversial or they'll call anything I'm saying about LGBTQ hate speech. Talking about Jesus Christ being the way, the truth, and the life will become non-inclusive. More hate speech. And one by one, the podcast sites will vanish and disappear into the mist. Some domestic radio, AM and FM, will decide that this program is no longer suitable, it's too controversial, and it may disappear. Then followed by even some of the shortwave broadcasters may have their license threatened by programs like this. If you don't believe it can happen, look at the pandemic, how much we had rights and freedoms stripped away and how willingly we did it. Go back to 2015. Supreme Court legalizes same-sex marriage. Christians got angry about the White House in rainbow colors. But what have we done about it? We just complain, gloom, despair, and agony. is Oh, woe is us. We need to be sharing the good news while we have the time. I believe the day is coming, and it's coming sooner than you want to think. But even sharing the gospel message can put you in prison. It can in some parts of the world already. Most Americans do not have the faith of some of the people that I have met and had the opportunity to baptize. Many years ago, early in my ministry, I had a woman that started coming to church. And she had not been in church in years. She had actually married a Hindu. And he let her come to church. And then one Sunday, he decided, he decided because he cared about his wife, he, he would visit and listen. And for several weeks, he came to church and listened to the gospel message. One Sunday, after church, he approached me. And he asked about what does it take to become a Christian? And I shared with him, and a few weeks later, he was baptized. In doing that, his entire family in India rejected him as dead. He was now hated by his own family because he accepted Christ as his Savior. Now, how many Americans, if they were told, you become a Christian, you're going to lose your job, you can't buy food, you can't do this, How many would take the mark of the beast? We'll talk about that tomorrow. If you believe in our ministry, would you consider giving it your financial support? Make a check payable to Ancient Word Radio. That's Ancient Word Radio. Mailing address is 5753 Highway 85 North, number 3248. That's 5753 Highway 85 North, number 3248. The city is Crestview. One word. Crestview, Florida, and the zip code is 32536. Also, email me, bob, at truthtoponder.com, and let me know how you listen to this program. I really need to know this month. Till tomorrow, may God bless you. This has been Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman. To find out more, visit our website, truth, the number two, and the word ponder.com. That's truth, the number two, ponder.com. Truth to Ponder, shining the light of truth in a darkening world.